or this is take one billion for what I would do if I could make a Nightmare on Elm Street film. I did this type of film before where I talked about how I would do a Joker standalone film. I told you who I would cast, who I'd have direct. Uh, I'm not sure about casting or directing for A Nightmare on Elm Street. My take on, on the reboot. But I just want to give you some ideas. I'm going to shotgun them out there. They may not be well articulated. But hopefully you'll get an idea of like, kind of just get a taste of the glory of what I'm trying to uh, accomplish. Because I I would really like, I, I can just picture this type of a film and I can just, I can feel it hit me like, wow, this would be a great direction to, to take the films. Excuse me. You know, A Nightmare on Elm Street, the original, it's kind of like episode four of Star Wars because there is a whole movie of events that takes place before the first movie. You have Freddy Krueger as a serial killer stalking and killing children. And it, just a, a, a murder spree. And the town, you know, gets so fed up, they, they finally band together. The adults finally band together. And, you know, uh, they figure out that it's Freddy Krueger and he he gets off scot free or whatever there's no there's no evidence however you want to explain how he gets off and so the parents are like you know we need to take this into our own hands and then they uh they 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 have some vigilante justice if you will that would make an amazing film if done well here is how i would approach this and again this would be a self-contained prequel so what i mean by that is it's not assuming that there's going to be a sequel. Like, it's it's self-contained. And if it's popular, there can be sequels. And then you can do Freddy Krueger as this dream killer. But this is all about the town, the people, the children, uh, and Freddy Krueger. And learning about a little bit more about who he is and seeing him grow and expand as a killer think of the movie Split. This would be a, a big influence on the direction or the concept of the film that I'm, I would try to do. You have a film that is is really well done. It's intense. It's captivating. It, it's I was on the edge of my seat most of the film. And James McAvoy gives a great, captivating performance. And it's not until the last minute of the film that you're like, oh my gosh, this takes place within the Unbreakable universe. Now, within this prequel, it we wouldn't take that long. It would probably be maybe 30 to 40 minutes before you're like, oh my gosh, this is a Nightmare on Elm Street film. I didn't... And people would get some glee from that. And then there's those that are just seeing it because they like the trailer and they're like, okay, I like horror films. And then they're like, oh, this is part of an established uh, franchise? So you will be bringing in new uh, audiences because you'll be injecting things that are are very popular right now, um, while also paying uh, tribute to what made the original film so popular. So this would be going back to kind of the darker tone of the first three films. Yes, there's some humor, there's some um, meta commentary, if you will. But it's, it's, it's mainly dark. It's mainly like showing the brutality of the killer. The first 10 to 15 minutes, we will not be seeing the kills, but we will be seeing the aftermath. You'll be seeing the police finding the bodies, or you'll be hearing the news reports. And you'll be seeing, you know, we'll be introducing the parents, and they're younger, and they got, they got families, they're worried. And it is relevant to today because every parent these days has to worry about letting their kids off to school, letting them, like, can you let them just go to their friend's house? I mean, we live in a, a dangerous time and a dangerous world. That fear of parents over their children is absolutely relevant and, 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 uh, pertaining to current, our current times. So we can play with that theme of parental fear and what, what would parents do 
you know, to protect their children, playing off of that theme. So the first 10, 15 minutes is kind of like a, a crime drama slash crime thriller. And so we, we get to kind of learn about the community and just about, you know, uh, seeing the aftermath of it. And it's scary. It's like, who is doing this? Why would they go after, you know, young teenagers? This is horrifying. And then, you know, we get to find out about the uh, the original Elm Street kids. Because if you watched any of the deleted scenes, you find out that the kids in the first Nightmare on Elm Street are the second set of kids that these families have. And you, so you'll have those families there. And they're happy. You're seeing them optimistic. Not, not the tired and... Uh, depressed versions that we see in the first film. So there's th this light from from these families, and you're seeing it slowly being like drained by these this killer. And then you know, yes, we'll find out that there is Freddy Krueger, and um, there will be things about him that we'll learn. But he's not going to be the main character. He's going to be in it a lot. But he's not. He's not the. Uh, unlike Split, he's not the main character. So, um, you have the families. You have the children. You know things like it and Stranger Things and Super Eight. A group of kids trying to like band together. Like, hey, we're going to try to figure this out is very popular and and I know a lot of people are like oh well it's being done to death well it's like if it's really popular it's not been done to death yet and there and, and that this doesn't have to be a film exactly like that like we know that most of these kids are going to die so it's not exactly like stranger things or it you know the kids the losers club they all survive in the first film stranger things all those kids they they survived this is, yeah, most of them are not. Uh, we'll have a couple of kids from maybe families that uh, were not necessarily mentioned in the original film, and maybe they'll survive, and then at the end of it, they're like, we're out of here, we're, we're moving. And that's why we don't hear about them in the first film. But what I also wanted to explore, besides, you know, the family, the town, introducing those established characters is learning a little bit more about who Freddy Krueger is, seeing him grow as a killer, again, borrowing from Split. Uh, in Freddy's Dead, um, The Final Nightmare, his daughter, so yes, she will be mentioned somehow in this film, like, oh, the our, the janitor has, a, you know, just had a newborn or whatever, you know? Certain, you know, details about him will be sprinkled throughout. And, uh, you know, anyways... In Freddy's Dead, she sees him as as an early, or early serial killer. He has all these prototype gloves before he makes the knives one. Put stuff like that in. We see he he kills with tools because of his familiarity, because of his work. And then we see him start making gloves, and you know we can see the his progression as a serial killer. And it'd be interesting because here's one question. I've always had is did Freddy Krueger know that he was going to become this like this dream killer was that planned at all so with without going into like you know trying to answer every question you know putting light in every dark corner which is a bad idea in horror you always want to have a little bit of ambiguity a little bit of mystery and darkness left because that's what horror is it's an exploration of the darkness so there still needs to be a bit a bit of darkness, but putting a little bit of light on like, oh, okay, so Freddy Krueger was researching about dreams, or it was a religious conviction, or it was a philosophy, a study of philosophy or psychology, or it was a study of, of, of experimental sciences, something to where we get the idea of, okay, you know, this was something that maybe he was thinking of, or he, something he believed concepts of like fear the, the psychological concepts of fear being explored uh how they can be exploited you know how the evil can exploit fear uh and 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 continuing that in, in into dreams 
you can have moments where these children are, or the parents are having these nightmares about this killer. It's not Freddy's doing because he doesn't have that ability. He's just a mortal serial killer. But it's just playing on the idea, okay, this guy is so horrifying and terrifying that you have nightmares. And people people have nightmares about real serial killers. Back when they were more more of a prominent focus in the media, you know, people had, you know, nightmares about, you know, Jack the Ripper and uh, the BTK and all these other types of killers. Um I'm sure people had nightmares, especially if you lived in those areas where he was target, the killer was targeting. And so it'd be, it'd be kind of like a uh, like an homage, almost like, oh, people are having these nightmares about the killer, about being killed, but they obviously don't die in their dreams in this film. Again, like I said, it would be self-contained. So by the by the end of the film, the parents so enraged that the justice system hasn't worked, but they they got the killer. They take the law into their own hands and they kill him and that's and it's like okay the evil has been vanquished peace has been restored the the survivors are suffering their losses and and and, mo- and trying to move forward so it has a somewhat happy ending but like if you if you know anything about Nightmare on Elm Street you know he's coming back but it's a self-contained story and it's not relying fully on the you know. Uh, on the on the paranormal or supernatural aspects this is a a slasher film with elements of of crime drama of thriller of vigilantism yeah there are so many things about freddy's mythology to explore you know like putting showing maybe part of the trial or or showing like how did he get off? Yeah, how did he get away? How how was he not convicted? It'd be interesting to see part of that mentioned in this story. I don't know who I would cast in any of these as a you know who would I cast as a young Freddy Krueger? Uh, who would I have as director? One of my favorite up and coming horror directors is uh, Fed Fede Fed Alvarez. Sorry, I don't know how to say his first name. It's F E D E. Fede or Fed Alvarez. Uh, he's the one that did the Evil Dead remake. He also did uh, Don't Breathe. I love both of those films. Automatically, him taking an established franchise gets my interest. Um, there are others out there that I'm sure I could, I would feel like, oh, they would, they would do a good job. Anyways. I'd like to hear what you all think. Who would you cast? Who, who would you have direct? Am I am, am I on the right track? Like, does this sound interesting? I've been talking for over thirteen minutes about uh, how excited I am about this this concept. Does that sound interesting? And it, if you're a writer, can you want to take these ideas? Go ahead. Like, I would love to put this down on paper. I just just don't know when I would ever have the time to write it. So these are ideas are, are free for the taking. I would lo- This is what I would love to see in a Nightmare on Elm Street film. Let me know what you think. Take care, folks. And I will be doing more films like this. I'll be exploring, you know, how I'd handle other franchises as well if uh, anyone's interested. All right, take care. Uh, don't have any nightmares. <laughs>